Hey everyone, um, what we're going to do today is uh, a hair jig I like to call the hairy stripper. Um, in the vise we have a 1 8 ounce football head with a size 1 owner 5313 hook. Um, and the color is green pumpkin. So we're going to get started here. Since there's no ring on the collar or anything, we're going to use a little bit of a Loctite super glue to lock our thread in when we start our base. You also see that I left the barb on the collar. Um, that'll also help keep your thread from sliding down. So get our base started and trim the excess. This is a real easy pattern, but it's really effective. It's that time of year. So once you're satisfied with your base, then take a rabbit strip. Um, of course, this is green pumpkin, so I'm going to use a, an olive, dark olive, olive variant, all, any of that color would work with this. And uh, what you're going to want to do is cut it so that the leather is about two inches long. For this, now this is what I prefer for this size. If it was, um, if I was tying a 16th ounce, it would be a little shorter. But I like to make the leather about two inches, and uh, with the hair that extends off, makes it about two and a half, maybe two and three eighths, somewhere around there. Uh, if you don't have as much hair coming off the end of the leather, you're going to want to make the strip a little bit longer. But anywhere from two to two and a half inches is fine. So once I got that cut, I'm going to take it leather side down and I'm going to tie it right in, right to the front, just like that. And of course, I'm going to pull it down a little bit to make it easier for you uh, so I don't get it too high up there. And I'm going to make a couple wraps just to hold it in place. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this out of the vise. I'm going to look to see where this hook is going to pop through on the leather. I'm going to mark it with my thumb, center the hook point, and pop it through. So now you're hook is actually holding that rabbit strip. It's actually pierced through there. And I'm going to put it back in the vise. I'm going to make a few more wraps. Now we're going to take this. This is all of fox hair. If you don't have fox hair, a good substitute is craft fur. I prefer the extra select craft fur, but uh, any decent quality craft fur, fur will work. And you're going to want to take, take a nice pinch. Just put it up to it and see. Get an idea of what you need. That will be fine. I already have some cut, that, uh, but it's the same amount. Used to doing it. Take your fox hair, and you want this, the bulk of it, to be around, right around that hook bend. But you'll have some long pieces that extend down. That's actually good to have that. But the bulk of it, you want the heavier stuff. You want it to end right around that hook end. So I'll measure it out and trim off the excess. And then I'm going to make two loose wraps on the back, and I'm going to work it around. Did I have coverage all the way around? That looks pretty good. And now we'll start tying it. Back off, I made a wrap a little bit too low. I actually went below the barb. 
That's not good. There we go. So you get it wrapped pretty good. Now comes the last part. Now I don't use any flash on this. I'm going to use this stuff. This is like a chenille. It's called uh, J Fair's Long Shuck. And it's a type of chenille, but it's got these really long pieces in it. And it's it has flash. You can see how shiny it is. I like it be, you know, in black for this pattern, for the simple, it adds contrast, it's going to help this jig stand up in the water, and it's going to add some flash to it. So you're going to get a lot of different things from it. So what I like to do is I like to pull some of the fibers off the end so you get that little piece of thread there, just like I do with all my chenille. I tie it in by a thread, that way you don't have a bolt a bulky place where you tied in a whole piece and we're gonna wrap and with this stuff you almost like feathers you wrap that you pull the fibers back and again you're gonna want a piece about about three inches long you're gonna want it a little bit longer uh, you might have some waste, like uh, I always make sure to have a little more than a little less. I want it to cover all the way up to the, the head. And I'll make two wraps to secure it. I'll take my scissors. Careful not to cut too much of it and trim the end. Pull the fibers back. And finish securing it. Pretty much done now except for uh, the finish, which we'll take our whip finisher. Six. One more time. One, two, three, four, five, six. And as always, you know, the thread that I use is Danville flat waxed nylon. 210 denier for a bass jig. Trim it, and we're going to take some Sally Hansen's hard as nails. And what I do with this, because of that long shuck, I take a, a bodkin, which is just a little piece of brass with like a long uh, needle type thing on the end of it, and I dip it in my Sally Hansen's. And that's just going to allow me to precisely place that head cement without getting it all over the place. And there it is. I'll give you a good show I'll show you a good picture of this. So I get my stuff put away here. That sits up real nice right off the bottom it's uh, you'll be able to see this this will sit right up on end uh, really effective pattern give it a try the next time you decide to get at the bench uh, let me know if you have any problems with it let me know if you do any well with it thanks for watching